Hello, welcome to the course on polymers. We start another week uh, of uh, lectures and uh, we are continuing with our discussions related to polymer processing and uh, recycling techniques. And uh, these processing techniques are extremely important in terms of determining the overall performance. And uh, uh, we started uh, this overall discussion in, in the third lecture itself where we talked about process structure properties. And, and so all these uh, interrelations in case of macromolecular uh, polymeric systems is very fascinating. Uh, processing determines properties, properties determine processing, processing determines structure, structure de determines processing and of course structure and properties are related to each other. So we will continue uh, discussing some aspects related to polymer processing operations by uh, focusing on uh, the applications and the applied aspects. Uh, we look at uh, what are the broad shaping operations uh, which are used. Specifically, we look at uh, blow molding as a, a processing operation because it is used quite commonly for polymers and there are several other techniques also which are uh, useful. And uh, in all of this, mixing is an important component and we will spend some time thinking about uh, how is mixing different in case of a, a polymeric material as opposed to when we mix sugar in water for making juice or uh, we mix it in milk uh, for uh, making uh, tea or coffee, uh, how is that uh, mixing different compared to a system where there are macromolecules involved, where uh, rheological response is quite different and also the segmental mobility is there, but given that macromolecule is a very large molecule. The diffusion coefficient of macromolecule is much lower than that of small molecule. So all of this uh, we will review in this lecture. So the shaping operations uh, are uh, of different class. We have basically dyes with through which a polymer uh, melt uh, or a polymeric uh, resin plus fiber mixture is uh, extruded. And uh, this could be to make films or sheets. Uh, it could be to make pipes or it could be to do wire coating or to make fibers and it could also be in case of let us say pultrusion or in case of uh, uh, making uh, other objects like C uh, sections or I beams. Again, we can have either open profiles or hollow profiles. So, for example, uh, we, we can have uh, an I beam uh, preparation in which case the cross section area will look like this. And so the extrusion die will have to have a T shape. On the other hand, we can have a hollow profile also in which case we will have the uh, opening which is commensurate with this shape required. However, the die opening and the whatever final extrudate profile are very different and this is because of couple of reasons. One, macromolecules are being forced to go through the narrow opening and we are forcing the segmental uh, stretching and other operations at macromolecular level. And as soon as it comes on an extrudate, again uh, the macromolecular recovery is there in terms of conformations changing again back. Also, there is surface tension of uh, macromolecule and surrounding air and, and so based on this, what is the shape of uh, the extruded profile can be very different. So in the end, let us say if we want this uh, rectangular kind of profile then uh, the uh, die opening can be much more complicated. And this is uh, something which is done based on uh, understanding that a polymer engineer has in terms of how does the extruded uh, shape depend on the die opening. And this is generally a, a empirical, semi-empirical and some fundamental insights which are combined to do get this uh, operation. Uh, once the extruded part is there, we have to do stretching. For example, we saw biaxially oriented polypropylene films or we could also have uniaxial stretching to get a fiber of a uh, definite uh, uh, properties. We saw that uh, ultra high molecular weight polyethylene stretching is done to such an extent draw ratios are extremely high. So that uh, chain orientation is extremely high. So such uh, stretching is involved. We may also use rolling to uh, do the shaping. In fact, if you take up row material on a roller and if you rotate one roller faster than the other, then again stretching happens. And of course, we could also have blowing and in case of a bottle making blowing is used, in case of film making blowing is used, where from inside we blow the material. So that if I let us say extrude a pipe, 
So, I will get a pipe being extruded and in this if I blow air, what happens is this air will try to push and uh, in effect this uh, film will uh, start blowing and that is the uh, process of blowing and that again will lead to stretching and shaping operations. And of course, the thickness will depend on how much it is blown because it is the same am amount of material which is being now blown to a very large extent. And uh, just to highlight various uh, set of uh, shaping operations and how different industries use different nomenclature, uh, roller die is a term which is used uh, generally in rubber processing and uh, you can try to look through uh, and uh, analyze uh, what is it a combination of. Is there an internal mixer involved? Is there an open mill? Uh, is it a calendar? Uh, is there a, a vertical calendar with a mixer? what is it uh, or whether it is just an extruder feeding with a two roll calendar. So, try doing some search and uh, you can I am sure arrive at the answer. Let us look at uh, one operation in again little more detail. Uh, this is blow molding uh, which is used for making bottles. And uh, the uh, bottle uh, will have uh, very different features on its surface and those are basically put on the mold also. So, the mold uh, decides whatever is the outer shape of the uh, bottle and how this bottle is made is you start with a what is called either a parison or a preform. So, there are two ways in which uh, this blow molding operations is done. Sometime you extrude this at the same time uh, blowing can happen and then uh, you can make the part or you can injection mold this and then uh, just put it here and then uh, do the blow molding operation. So, for example, here uh, this has been injection molded and now what you do is you close the mold and heating is done so that this uh, blue polymeric material can deform. And uh, then what you do is you inject a rod. So, this is called stretch blow molding. So, you stretch so that uh, polymer molecules get oriented. You must have noticed that some bottles are extremely thin and still they can withstand uh, the amount of uh, water filling that happens and the load that it is supposed to carry. And partly this is because the orientation has been ma manipulated by doing stretching and uh, through these uh, reinforcements, uh, these shapes, so that uh, with least amount of material you can have requisite performance in terms of holding the water and not breaking. So, stretching or stretch blow molding involves stretching the polymeric material initially so that molecules get oriented along the direction and then blowing. So, the fourth stage is where now the gases are blown into the material. And uh, since mold is closed, what happens is this material will go and then conform to the mold surface. And uh, once the conformation happens, then uh, you can immediately uh, start cooling and uh, or stop heating and then uh, separate the mold. And you can see that uh, these parts uh, will be based on whatever is the mold uh, features. And then you can get the product uh, which is uh, and all of this process can happen very quickly. And uh, just to give you how quick or uh, slow the process is, uh, injection molded uh, cycle time is uh, less than a second, uh, less than 10 seconds, uh, while blow molding is also not very slow. 10 to 15 seconds one can get a bottle out. Now, you can see why there are uh, so many different uh, plastic bottle products out there. Compared to glass or uh, ceramic uh, container uh, making, these are extremely inexpensive operations because you can achieve volumes very quickly. Very large amount of bottles can be manufactured in very short amount of time. Thermoforming, uh, which is also a quicker technique where we shapes are largely flat or slightly curved and uh, it is like a stamping operation which is used in melt. And so, thermoforming, uh, the shaping is done between two platens uh, and uh, therefore, the shape cannot be very complex. But again, it takes just about a minute to complete the operation. Compression molding on the other hand can have more complex operation, but it takes more amount of time. And uh, many of these cases uh, 
there are finer features for example whenever we do we are doing these operations it's possible that uh, gases or air can get entrapped which will lead to voids so in all of these cases we will have to manipulate uh, the pressurization uh, closing opening in such a way to minimize uh, entrapment of voids or the void generation so void generation is a very important uh, defect uh, during polymer processing and this needs to be minimized in compression molding for example uh, this can be done sometimes by doing what's called breathing so we can close the compression mold then open it little bit and again close it to allow the uh, gases or uh, voids which are there to escape and so that's why it's called a breathing operation we hope that the polymer will exhale the voids out on the other hand the tanks which are made using uh, polyethylene um, quite often uh, water storage tanks uh, that takes about a 30 minute so through rotational molding basically the thickness of the tank is uh, made and these are quite thick uh, tanks as opposed to the bottles or other uh, uh, thinner uh, uh, blow molding uh, bottles or blow film blowing thin films uh, rotational molded uh, tanks are quite thick these are supposed to hold thousands and thousands liters of uh, water or other substances in the case of continuous uh, production units you can see the mind boggling amount of uh, material that can be produced in one hour we can make one ton of uh, film and remember these are very thin films so this is an extremely large amount of polymeric films that can be made and therefore you shouldn't be surprised that why these films are so ubiquitous and as polymer scientists and engineers it's now our responsibility to figure out sustainable ways of doing this coating calendaring can also be reasonably rapid where in a second uh, we can process a couple of meters of uh, material so in all of this mixing is also equally important and uh, mechanisms of mixing in case of polymers are uh, quite different compared to mixing in let's say oil or water or uh, air and things like that and that is because of the presence of turbulence because uh, in case of uh, polymers the viscosity is extremely high uh, turbulence is not uh, observed and uh, because turbulence implies that you know there are small eddies getting formed broken and uh, there are lots of fluctuations in velocity and pressure at each and every point mixing is actually quite fast and once these eddies get broken down to very small level there can be quickly molecular mixing which is based on diffusion but in case of uh, polymer there is only laminar flow possible which means one sheet of polymer moves another sheet of polymer moves next to it and these two sheets may be moving at slightly different rate so mixing can uh, only happen uh, predominantly because of uh, molecular and segmental motions so laminar mixing uh, some amount of mixing happens but eventually the rate determining step is molecular segmental diffusion we can we have of course if we have some uh, fillers or if we have blend domains then we can also have a dispersive mixing where the agglomerates can get broken and then they can come together and so on or the blend domains can get broken so there is a distribution or dispersion of these fillers and domains through which again mixing can happen and generally these mixing operations given that uh, macromolecular mixing is very important in the end to get the final performance are done using several different types of operations uh, if we have basically rolls as part of mixing so we can pass the material through a set of rollers so there is a narrow opening through uh, which uh, we can uh, so we have the polymer uh, polymeric material and then uh, we can force it by having these two rollers rotate and then we get the material out because now we are forcing it through the narrow opening and we are uh, shearing the material and uh, mixing will also happen but again this will be uh, laminar mixing and dispersive mixing uh, because latex are mixed this way it's a multi phase system so therefore particles can come together particles can separate and so it will have a combination of laminar and dispersive mixing so rubber formulations for example are processed this way because there are large number of ingredients which have to be mixed we can also use this to achieve a good molar mass 
uh, because uh, chain scission and other uh, processes can happen because of high rates of shear which are generated in such processes. So, we have both mixing as well as mastication. We have of course, internal mixer in which case uh, we have a vessel uh, in which uh, 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 a specific uh, impeller or a blade is put and then this is rotated. And uh, again, because of very high viscosity of polymeric materials, the mixer and the blades are very different design compared to mixing in case of uh, low viscosity fluids. And so, we have something called a sigma mixer and a Banbury mixer and crucial aspect in each of these is to have this uh, impeller uh, design. It is very possible because of very high viscosity that when we are doing this impelling action or stirring action, lot of material does not get stirred at all. So, you have to have an impeller design which ensures that everywhere mixing happens. At the same time, this cannot be done very fast because the viscosities are extremely high. Also, in case of polymeric materials, viscous dissipation will uh, lead to a lot of heat generation. And so, very careful uh, uh, mixing rates will have to be used to avoid heating on one hand and to ensure good mixing on the other hand. And we also have extruders uh, and especially twin screw extruders which are examples of continuous mixers because uh, internal mixers will happen to be batch. You add uh, polymer in uh, this and then uh, wait for it to mix. So, with this we will come to close uh, the lecture and uh, the uh, answer uh, I am sure you can get uh, based on reading related to what are the different uh, operations that are used in rubber processing. Thank you.